first off, thank you guys for planning this event. I think this is an incredible event, um, and I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. Um, and I, I really wish my mom could be here, actually, which is kind of silly, but my mom is the one who got me hooked on books in the first place. Um, we, we grew up in Glacier, same area to be exact, and not a whole lot of kids around, so in the winter we just read a lot. Um, and the reason I chose To Kill a Mockingbird was because every year we would go up to Illinois for Christmas and we would stay with my grandparents, um, and that's when I first got my introduction to To Kill a Mockingbird um, through the movie. And we would always watch it, all of us sitting in the living room, and the Christmas tree would be off in the corner with the lights on, and I would sit on the couch next to my grandpa, and he would always tell me I was perfect. <laughs> um, and, and every year, without fail, we would watch To Kill a Mockingbird, and then I actually read the book, and it's just an incredible book. Um, and it just never, never fails to remind me of my grandfather, um, who is very similar to Atticus Finch, and, taught me a lot of the same lessons that Atticus taught Scout, and so this is where I'm going to Calpurnia bent down and kissed me. I ran along, wondering what had come over her. She'd always wanted to make up with me. That was it. She'd always been too hard on me. She had seen the last air of her fractious ways, and she was sorry and too stubborn to say so. I was weary from the day's crimes. After supper, Atticus sat down with the paper and called, Scout, you ready to read? The Lord sent me more than I could bear, and I went out to the front porch, and Atticus followed me. Something wrong, Scout? I told Atticus I didn't feel well and didn't think I would go to school anymore. That was all right with him. <laughs> Atticus sat down in the swing and crossed his legs. His fingers wandered around his watch pocket, and he said that that was the only way he could think. He waited an amiable sign, silence, and I sought to reinforce my position. You never went to school, and you do all right, so I'll just stay home too. You can teach me like Granddaddy taught you and Uncle Jack. No, I can't, said Atticus. I have to make a living. Besides, they put me in jail if I kept you at home. A dose of magnesia for you tonight and school tomorrow. I'm feeling all right, really. I thought so. What's the matter? Bit by bit, I told him the day's misfortunes. And she said, you taught me all wrong, so we can't ever read it anymore, ever. Please don't send me back. Please, sir. Attica stood up and walked to the end of the porch. When he completed his examination, though I see a vine, he strolled back to me. First of all, if you learn a simple trick, Scout, you'll be along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. <clears throat> Sir? <clears throat> until you climb into a skin and walk around in it. Attica said I had learned many things today, and Miss Caroline had learned several things herself. She learned not to hand something to a Cunningham for one thing. <clears throat> and if Walter and I had put ourselves in her shoes, we'd have seen it was an honest mistake on her part. We could not expect her to learn an all make home swing ways in one day and we could not hold her responsible when she did not know better. Well, I'll be dog, I said. I didn't know better than not to read her, and she held me responsible. Listen, Atticus, I don't have to go to school. I was bursting with a sudden thought. Burr's evil, remember? He just got to school the first day. The tyrant lady reckons she'll get carried out in the law when, he, when she gets his name on the roll. You can't do that, Scout, Atticus said. Sometimes it's better to bend the law a little bit in special cases. In your case, the law remains rigid. So go to school, you must. I don't see why I don't have to when he doesn't. Then listen. Attica said that Ewells had been the disgrace to make home for three generations. None of them had done an honest day's work in his recollection. He said that some Christmas, when he was getting rid of the tree, he would take me with him and show me where and how they lived. They were people, but they lived like animals. They can go to school anytime they want, and when they show the fancy symptom of wanting an education, there are ways of keeping them in school by force. But it's silly to force people like Ewells into a new environment. If I didn't go to school tomorrow, you'd force me to. Let us leave it at this, said Atticus dryly. You, Miss Scout Finch, are of the common folk. You must obey the law. 
He said that the Uls were a member of an exclusive society made up of the Uls. In, cer in certain circumstance, the common folk judiciously allowed them certain privileges by the simple method of becoming blind to some of the Uls' activities. They didn't have to go to school for one thing. Another thing, Bob, Burris' father, was permitted to hunt and tramp out of season. Atticus, that ain't bad, I said. In Maycomb County, hunting out of season was a misdemeanor at law and a capital, capital felony in the eyes of the people. It's against the law, right? And it's certainly bad, but when a man spends his relief checks on green whiskey and his children have a way of crying hunger from pain, crying from hunger pain, I don't know of any landowner around here who begrudges those children any game their father can hit. Mr. Rule shouldn't do that. Of course he shouldn't, but he'll never change his ways. Are you going to take out your disapproval on his children? No, sir, I said, and made a final stand. But if I keep on going to school, we can't ever read anymore. That's really bothering you, isn't it? Yes, sir. When I got Atticus looked down at me, I saw the expression on his face that always made me expect, expect something. Do you know what a compromise is, he asked? Bending the law? No. It's an agreement reached by mutual concessions. It works this way, he said. If you'll concede the necessity to go to school, we'll go on reading every night just as we always have. Is it a bargain? Yes, sir. Well, we'll consider it sealed without the usual formality, Atticus said, and he saw me preparing to spit. As I opened the front screen door, Atticus said, by the way, Scout, you better not say anything at school about our agreement. Why not? I'm afraid our activities would be received with considerable disapprobation by the learned authorities. Jen and I were accustomed to our father's last will and testament to fiction, and we were at all times free to interpret Atticus for a translation that was beyond our understanding.